Hi, I'm Stuart Spector from Spector Musical Instruments, and you're watching The Musician Network. Stay tuned for more great stuff. We're here at 2011 NAMM with the one and only Stuart Spector from Spector Designs. Thank you. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Pretty good. You know, it's the, the last day, so it's been, been a yes, nice little ride. Yes, it's, uh, it's been a fun show and uh, a little bit of a crispy critter today, but not too bad. So what's been new since we've come to the factory? Um, well, uh, among the new things that we've done this year was the, the Coda bass, which are inspired by the classic J bass. And uh -huh. We put a few new tweaks and wrinkles on that, and that's been a lot of fun. Sure. Uh, we're now doing that in four and five string models. And uh, among the things that we seem to have moved in an interesting direction with is seem to have eliminated some of the dead spots on the G string, oh, wow. which were endemic with that design, and, and which really people have become sort of like, come to expect, sure. but, um, and I think that it's just the result of the type of truss rod that we use and the pal ferro that we're using for the fingerboard material. So the neck has wound up being stiffer, mm -hmm. which has raised the resonant frequency of the neck to a point where those dead spots have shifted up to the point where they're they're not significant wow. so that's been fun and, and it's been really gratifying to have you know some of our associates in the industry who are incredibly critical because there's plenty of people in this area telling us that hey these things sound great you've done yeah. a really good job and so that's been a lot of fun absolutely after all these years what what still inspires you to get up and keep being innovative and keep doing what you're doing well, I mean, I got involved with this because I love music, sure. and and I, I just feel privileged to be involved in it. I play with some friends. We play gigs about once a month nice. in a little, you know, bar restaurant down the block from our workshop, and uh, mainly sort of rock dance music or whatever we like. And yeah. I'm privileged to play with some guys who are terrific players and. Uh, you know, pretty much our rehearsals consist of setting up the equipment and going, hey, I want to do this tune, and uh, okay, what key is it in? And okay, uh, anything, yeah, okay, yeah, it goes to the six here, and, yeah. and okay, let's do it. So that's fun, and uh, it's, you know, it's, I started off to just build instruments myself, and I'm still building them and playing them, and, uh, you know, and one of the things that I've said in various interviews is it's called, the word in English is playing music. Yeah. Well, play yeah, music. play music, have fun. <laughs> you know? That's it's, what it's uh, all about. Absolutely. And, uh, and growing up, who were some of the guys that inspired you to, to start playing or to start building for that matter? Or? Oh, boy. Well, um, I started playing during the, the, as Martin Mole put it, the folk music scare. Um, and that was, you know, in the 60s, uh, early 60s in high school, and uh, started playing acoustic guitar and then some electric guitar. And the first electric guitar that I had was a Zimgar, which was a dreadful, <laughs> dreadful <laughs> instrument. And the first customization project, it had little rocker switches on it, uh -huh. and the first customization uh, project was to to put duct tape on them to prevent them. They were positioned so that if you were strumming, you'd yeah. shut them off, oh, yeah. and the whole guitar would go dead. I think so uh, yeah, that was that was that was the start of that. And um, one of the guys who was inadvertently instrumental in me starting to build instruments is a buddy of mine named Mike Crop, who's a damn great player, fantastic banjo player, great guitar player, even though that's not his main instrument. Uh, among other things, he, he was in Vassar Clements' backup band. He plays now once again with a, a super bluegrass band out of Rhode Island, New England area called Northern Lights. But anyhow, when I was about, oh God, 20 years old or so, sitting around with Mike in his living room and he was playing his Gibson Master Tone, Hearts and Flowers, Neck, Five String Banjo and wailing away at it. And he said, said, oh yeah, like one of my buddies that I sort of went to college with made the neck for me in his apartment in Denver. And, um, and I went, oh gee, well if this guy could make this beautiful banjo neck in his apartment in Denver, I could probably make myself some sort of electric guitar or bass. Sure. And uh, that was like the silly impetus for it. 
went to a store in New York called H.L. Wild and bought some wood and other materials and got the only book on the subject that was available at that time, which was Irving Sloan's Classical Guitar Construction, uh -huh. and set off to try and make instruments. And luckily ran into some other people, among them a dear friend of mine named Billy Thomas, who was it was it is an incredibly skilled woodworker who came from three or four generations of woodworkers, all of whom had retained all of their fingers. That's incredible. Good training That's, yeah, and good, good concept. Time, Absolutely, you know, they're, they're definitely good concept. And uh, started to learn how to use some machinery, and you know it's been through all kinds of permutations starting with uh, real conventional woodworking machinery and four years ago now I finally took the leap into computer machining technology which uh, is wonderful for a, a lot of things there's still a lot of handwork that goes sure. into yeah. sanding and scraping and finishing for it's just craftsmanship well sweating like sweating the details exactly. which we, which we really do in, in every way possible but uh, the new technology uh, in some ways makes for a, a lot of flexibility because anything that I can draw, I can machine. Yeah. So it's nice to have those horizons open up. Sure. And it's inspiring. I mean, you, you get those motors rolling of what you can do. There's no yeah. limitations. Yeah, and it, it's so much fun. I mean, drawing stuff in 3D on the computer yeah. is just a hoot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'll put in a free plug here for Rhinoceros Software okay. and, Rhinoceros Rhino, software, and Rhino Cam <laughs> Machining, who are located Rhino Cam Mexsofts out here in Orange County, and cool. they're great folks. And Joe Adnan, who wrote Rhino Cam, is a guitar player, and nice. uh, great people, great great stuff to work with. Very cool. Yeah, we were talking over there about you know kids coming up and, and playing music and. and how they get inspired, and you were telling me a story about the Beatles. I, I thought that yeah, was right. I, I, I think that even though this is not in some ways one of the most fun movies to watch, The Beatles, Let It Be, uh -huh. is something that I try and bring to like various aspiring musicians' attention. Because even though it happened at a point where their career, where they were starting to break up yeah. and things were headed downhill, there are these great scenes where one of the guys in the band is teaching somebody else in the band or the rest of the band the song and they're sitting around like a bunch of kids in a garage going g a minor d e minor stumbling through this tune and sounding pretty dreadful and to i think that that's something that people are not that aware of yeah, hearing the incredible them. finished product that results after the mix after the all the rehearsing and all the different takes it, it doesn't that's that's not where it starts yeah. even for guys of that level of talent who had been paid their dues playing in bars yeah, playing, together for that playing together for years yeah. since they were kids playing in bars for years learning all the classic rock tunes here they are That's stumbling through this thing which then evolves you know through the work the perspiration into these fantastic things that are just such a delight it's a true and testament i mean the heart you put in the work and it, it comes through. Yeah, I, I mean, there's, you know, hey, listen, people have different levels of, of natural talent. Sure. I mean, I'm privileged to work with one of my colleagues and right hand guys named Jimmy Eppert, who it's genetic. Yeah. His family have been musicians for hundreds of years, <laughs> and his kids are professional musicians. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, but one thing I learned years ago is that. You never, you never know what you can do until you try. And a lot of people, unfortunately, don't try and, and don't find out what they might be able to, to do, you know? It's like, hopefully you're not trying something that's gonna be fatal, yeah. you know? And maybe you'll just look sort of goofy or it won't work out, but, you know, it's, yeah, it's just important to give to stuff something. a shot, yeah, you know? Exactly. And, give a good shot to it. And a good instrument will inspire and Absolutely. make it that much better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and one of the great things about being in the musical instrument industry and building instruments is it's a really rare opportunity, especially in, in, in this day and age, to be making something that's not a disposable product. Absolutely. I mean, our instruments range in price, but you know some of them are really expensive. And one of the things I say to people is that, well, this instrument 
should be around for a hundred years or so, maybe longer, and you can pass this down to your kids, and you know, and that's that's a, a wonderful thing, you know, as opposed to something that's like going to wind up in the junk heap. Or you're buying a new one every couple of years. I mean, a quality yeah. instrument will stay with you, like you said, a lifetime. A absolutely, and it just and gets better as it ages, in my yeah. mind. Yeah, and, and and you know, and also. A quality instrument will be hopefully have versatility, and one of the things I get a lot of satisfaction out is the incredible range of music that different players play on Spectre basses. Yeah, who, who are some of the, the endorsers? Or who are some of the guys playing your, your instruments? Oh boy, we've got so many of them. I mean, ranging from Mike Kruger of Nickelback, mm -hmm. Rex Brown, who was the bass player in Pantera and now plays with Down, oh, yeah. uh, a fellow named Pablo Stennett who is Ziggy Marley's bass player. Mm -hmm. Um, Tony Hall, who's played with the Neville Brothers, uh, just we've got a, a huge range and roster of, of people playing all kinds of stuff on their bases. Very cool. Well, if people want to get a hold of you or check out the product, what, where's the best place for somebody to best find out Best place to go is to our website, spectorbase.com or spectorguitar.com, where is which is updated all the time and got a huge amount of all kinds of content there and contact information and look forward to everybody coming by and checking it out. Well, that's great. Once again, Spectre Designs, check them out, 2011 NAMM. Stay tuned. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Pleasure.